Greetings. Welcome to GIS 2552, Mapping Our World. I, your instructor, Joseph Kursky, very much look forward to working with you on this fascinating course. Hey, you may wonder, hasn't everything been mapped? What's new in mapping? Well, I just submit to you all that maps are engaging, fascinating, and relevant to our 21st century world. What will we study in this course? Well, first of all, maps have a long history, from clay tablets to wood blocks to being on metal, film, and now in the digital world. People have been using maps both to describe the world as it is and also to change their society. So maps are useful for considering what's existing now and also planning for a more healthy, happier, resilient, sustainable future. Maps are tools for social and scientific inquiry as well as for communication, as we'll see. Mapping has always been at the interplay of society and technology. And finally, the geospatial industry, of which mapping is a part of, is emerging as one of the three most important new industries for the 21st century, along with nanotechnologies and biotechnologies. So we are going to be firmly anchored in geotechnologies, mapping, geographic information systems, remote sensing, looking at the world from space or from aircraft or from drones or UAVs, and also GPS or global positioning systems, or more broadly, global navigation satellite systems. After completing this course, you will be able to read, use, and create, yes, create your own maps informed by a contextual understanding of how maps reflect the relationship between society and technology. You will be able to read, use, and create maps to support social and scientific inquiry and investigation, understanding the world and issues in that world, such as land cover or land use, uh, climate, weather, population change, etc. You will also be able to use a variety of technologies to make your own maps and appreciate the underlying engineering and geospatial technologies at play in the production of geospatial data. I also want you to be critical of data. Just because something's on the internet, you don't believe it, right? You, you think critically about it. Do I, do I trust this source or not? Same thing with mapping, or I would argue even more so with mapping. Be critical of maps, use them, they're very useful. But understand who created them. How is it, how were they created? How often are they updated? What scale that were they created at? What sources were used, etc. So I really want you to develop a critical eye on mapped data through this course. Now, how will we do all this? Well, we'll have 16 modules, one for every week. But the last week is more of a finishing up assignments and the final exam. Each week, you'll have one or more of the following: a video, some ebook readings, additional readings, activities and quizzes and exams. The, the activities are because I don't want you to just look at a bunch of maps that other people made. I want you to actually be able to interact with the world and everything that's in it through mapping and create your own maps. Now the quizzes and exams are not to stress you out. The quizzes and exams are for you to reflect on your own learning. My own field is actually education, geospatial education. So I'm really interested in how students learn with these tools and technologies. It's really an exciting world. We're gonna do this online, obviously, in this course. We're going to do week one work sometime during week one. I want you to do week two's work sometime during week two, et cetera. In other words, we're going through this as a cohort so we can learn from each other and interact with each other in the discussions. So I know life happens and sometimes you'll be able to forecast, hey, Joseph, in week four, I'm going to be doing this with some other courses or I'm gonna be busy doing something else. No worries. Just keep in close contact with me and let me know about your schedule. But generally, though, I, what I don't want you to do is wait till week 13 and do all the work in the course. Number one, you won't have the chance of interacting with our fine cohort of students here. And number two, we won't get to learn from you and your own reactions and your own journey. And number three, there's simply too much work to wait until the end of the course to do it. So try to keep up with, you know, week one, do the work during week one, whether that's Saturday morning for you or a Thursday afternoon or whatever. Make whatever block of time or times during the week work for you, but generally do the work during the weeks that we are assigning them. And there is an optional office hour. It's going to be on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 5 p.m. Central Time. And that's with me and whoever joins us from the course. And that way we can have some, you know, live interaction. Uh, that's always fun and I think it's informative and it could be helpful as you have technical questions or you just want to share some cool maps that you found or uh, are some questions you're grappling with. So we will have an optional office hour. 
but largely the course will be you working independently. And when I say independently, if you've got a couple of colleagues, friends, for example, in the course, no worries. Feel free to work with them. But of course, since the, the way that the university is structured, you're all graded individually, you're, you're going to be completing the work uh, on your own, but you can work as a team, but just, of course, working on the assignments. Now, why should you listen to me, Joseph Kursky? Well, I've had the, the, the blessings, really, the privilege of being in four major sectors of society in my own career as a geographer and a geospatial technology professional. So for example, I, I'm active in nonprofit associations. Maybe some of you students are interested in nonprofits. National Council for Geographic Education, for example, I was president of. So I'm really interested in geography education and education with geotechnologies. I also served in the federal sector. So in NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, US Census Bureau, and the US Geological Survey as cartographer and geographer private industry. I'm now education manager at ESRI, Environmental Systems Research Institute. We will be using some of the tools, ArcGIS Online, for example, from ESRI. And I've also worked in academia, University of Minnesota. I teach at the University of Denver and in a couple of other places as well. So I love teaching. I love interacting with students like you. So again, I'm not the only end-all be-all person in geotechnology, but I, th I feel like I have some things to share that I'd like you to journey with me through on and also learn from each other. That's what it's all about here. I am here to help you be successful with geotechnologies, okay? So feel free to use me as, as a resource in your journey, not just in this course, but if I can be of any assistance to you in the future, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, etc. okay? I'm very active on social media. Key things about this course. Number one, I want you to learn that maps are not just static documents. They are analysis tools. They're analysis tools. So not just where things are, but why they are where they are, the whys of where, what's where, why is it there, and why should we care? So why should we care about natural hazards, energy, human health, water, uh, social inequities, racial injustice, etc.? Why should we care about all these issues in our planet and a lot more we can name, ocean acidification, habitat loss, etc.? Why should we care about those things? How do we understand those things? In large part through maps. Maps are not going away just because we don't use as many paper maps anymore as we used to. The digital world has opened up a lot of uses for mapping technologies. Maps help us understand, again, the patterns, the relationships, the trends on our world, uh, above our world surface and, and underneath the surface. And also there's mapping on Mars, Ganymede, Io, Callisto, etc. There's There's outside the world mapping as well. But maps are about analysis, building a better, more resilient world, the whys of where. I also, through this course, as I mentioned earlier, want you to actually do this stuff. I don't want you just to read a bunch of stuff and watch a bunch of videos and hear me talk about the wonders, the glories of maps. I want you to actually make these. I want you to interact with them. So I'm gonna ask you some thoughtful questions, some of which have no right answer. They're just you reflecting on what kind of patterns and relationships do you see about population change or about eco regions or some other phenomenon. So you're going to be making maps and using maps as a scientist in this course. All right, let's get started. Map on. Thanks.